Hey guys and welcome to Stellaris with me Time and Tactics. It's time to start a new Let's Play. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I have in mind here. We're going to play as the Coalition of Velotaria Prime. The Velotarians, or actually the Quintai, they live on the planet of Velotaria. It's a tropical world as you can see here. And we have a direct democracy. That means we have an election every 10 years for a new ruler. And our empire effect is that we get a faction approval of 10%, which is good. And the ruler's effect for every skill level that they are, we gain 2% unity. And we get a flat bonus of edicts. Our edicts funds increase by 5. For our civics, we have two of them, meritocracy. That will give us a specialist pop resource output bonus, bonus of 10%. And we get one additional leader trait option to choose from for our leaders. The uh, council position that we get from meritocracy is the principal instructor. And that is something that we're going to have to unlock, I think, in the game if you want to use it. But if we do that, then our leaders will gain 2% in experience, I guess, across the board for every level that our principal instructor is. And we can pick that principal instructor from all four classes, Admiral, General, Scientist, and Governor. We also have Diplomatic Corps as a Civic. That will give us two extra envoys, and our diplomatic weight will be increased by 10%. We have a new position that we can use in the Council if we unlock it, the High Ambassador. For every skill level of this High Ambassador, we get a trust cap increase of 5 plus 5, and it's available to our Governors only. For ethics, we have three of them. We are egalitarian, and that gives us a faction unity gain of 25%. And our specialist pop resource output is increased by five. If you look at the meritocracy, there's 10 there, so it's a total of 15. We're also xenophile. That means, well, we have a few things there, right? We have increased opinion for other species. We can't use no refugees, and we can't enslave or displace but we gain 50% more insights from observing pre-faster-than-light civilization. So we're going to try to do that if we can. Our trade value is increased by 10%, and we get another envoy here. And I think we got two over here, right? Yeah, so it's a total of three there. And our external leader pool size is increased by one. Finally, for our ethics, we have materialist. We can now use the academic privilege living standards. It makes people happy, but we have to use consumer goods. We cannot outlaw AI, and we cannot use the robotic workers outlawed policy. But in return, we get a robot upkeep a reduction of 10%, and our research speed is increased by 5. Now, looking at the Quinti, what do we have? What are they all about? Well, they're enduring, so our lead lifespan is increased by 20 years. That's going to be good. They get up high level, they can keep going and get even higher. We are resilient, so our defense. Oh, an army, a defense army damage will be increased by 50%. But we are slow breeders, so our pop will grow mm, slower by 10% than the normal uh, growth speed. And we are talented, so our leader upkeep is reduced by 10%. And our leader maximum negative traits is reduced by 1 as well. It's all about leaders here, right? Finally, we have quick learners. That will give us another 10% experience gain for our leaders. Okay, that takes care of everything except our origin, our backstory here. And the one we have is on the shoulders of giants. This civilization has hidden boons in their solar system, placed there in a distant past by a mysterious benefactor. And we get what? Well, our home system has the Ex Gravitas Archaeology, Archaeology Site. A string of anomalous readings has been detected in our home system. We need to launch a surface excursion to find out more. Anyway, that's related to a mysterious benefactor. The penalty is that precursor event chains are blocked until this mystery is solved. So we want to send somebody down there, a leader, to take care of that, take a look at it. But anyway, that takes care of it. That is the Coalition of Military Prime. Let's jump into the selection of the game details. Okay, this here is the default setup. And what we have here is a medium star uh, medium galaxy i'm gonna actually bump that up to let's go for huge and as far as the galaxy shape i'm tempted to go for the ring so we're gonna be kind of limited in a 
you know, sideways ring, but it's going to be pretty big anyway. Let's go for that and see what that actually does for the game. I'm going to set the AI Empire's 15, the default for huge, but I'm going to say Advanced AI is going to be random, 2 to 4, Fallen Empire's 2 to 4, Marauders 1 to 3. I'll keep technology and tradition cost to the normal. Habitable worlds, I'll set that to normal as well. Pre faster than light civilizations. Remember, we got a little bit of boost there. I think a 50% speed. Oh no, 50%. Yeah, 50%. Was it the speed or was it the. Yeah, the gain insights. Maybe we'll bump it up just a little bit so there's a few more out there in the galaxy. So 1.5 times, so 50% more than normal. The crisis is recommended to be 1.5. I think I better keep it like that because I have not played it enough to be able to say what's going to happen there. Anyway, that's huge, so it sets it to 1.5 by default. The type random, we could do all. That would be, I feel, pretty hard because then basically they will then fire all of them in random order. I think we'll go with random, just one. But I'll be random which one. I'll keep the... The start, end, and victory year here, the normal. We could maybe bump them up, but I wouldn't know exactly what to put them to. We'll put them to this and see where we, that takes us. Difficult level, well, we have these to choose from here, as you can see. I'm gonna go for, I think, Commodore. And what I've done in the past is I've done the scaling on, and then it turns out that it's easy at the beginning, hard at the end. Do we wanna do something like that? I think it starts at I don't know what it starts off at. Maybe just Cadet. And then it goes up to Commodore towards the end. We can look here. When this is enabled, any AI bonuses from the difficult setting scale up over time. Okay, any bonuses. And then Commodore. Yeah, it's not like uh, the difficulty. Yeah, it doesn't start with it. They don't have a negative. Or oh, we don't have a bonus. So basically, it's going to start a little bit easier for us. Maybe we'll do that. We'll set it to... Now you can do mid-game. Oh, you can do mid-game. AI bonuses from the difficult setting scale up over time, starting at zero and reaching maximum at, uh, at the mid-game start year. Hmm. Or late game. Yeah, okay. So we can do either one. If we do mid-game, that basically means we have... What do we say here? We have till... Tw uh, well, no, what? 2300. We have 100 years before it's maxed out. Let's put it at late game. So it's going to be... Well, 2400. We have 200 years before it's maxed out at Commodore. We'll see how I do on that. Difficulty adjusted AI modifiers. If we do this one, there is a empire-wide economic modifiers that are multiplied by difficulty bonus for AI empires. So they give... Okay, so there's going to be more. They're going to get a more, more of a bonus in addition to what we already have here in Commodore. I'm going to leave that off. Aggressiveness, we'll set that to normal. The placement of empires. We can do clusters or we can do random. Let's do random. It's going to be interesting to have them around or maybe not around us right away. We'll see. Advanced neighbors. We'll say off. Nobody who's advanced. And I think that refers to these here. Advanced AI start can come and uh, join us right away next door. Okay. Hyperlane density. I think I'll bring that down just a smidge so that there's a few more choke points. Abandoned gateways and wormhole pairs. We'll keep them there. That'll be interesting to have them on a ring world. We'll see if they can take advantage of that somehow. Guaranteed habitable worlds too. Yep, we'll keep them the way they are. Caravaneers and L gates. We'll keep that. Xeno compatibility. Then that Xeno compatibility ascension perk is available. And I think in the past that was causing some performance issues, but it may have been a long time ago. Logistic growth ceiling. This controls how large the pop growth bonuses are when planets are in the middle of their logistic curve. I think I leave that the way it is by default. Growth required scaling. We'll leave that also there. And then Iron Man mode. You know, normally I don't play that because as a recording, it could get in trouble. But what the heck. Let's do that. I want to get some achievements. Maybe I can get some. We'll set that to on. Okay. So that's what we have here now. Hey, that's just, uh, let's go for it then. Okay, so here we are in the year 2200. It is January 1st. Coalition of Velatoria Prime. Baramdan Subir is our ruler. We'll take a look at him. Let's go ahead and begin. 
Okay, so here we are. Exciting. We're looking at Velutaria itself. Okay, let's look at Velutaria, the planet. Okay, so Velutaria here is Empire Capital. We get Stability 5, Amenities 10, Governing Ethics Attraction 100%, Automatic Resettlement Destination Chance 10%, and Resources from Jobs 10%. Okay, so it's very good to have an Empire Capital, obviously. If you want to change it, we can uh, select here. We won't do that. Now, it's a tropical world. It's 100% habitability. We are the Quintai, and it's a homeworld class, 30%. Tropical preference, 80. Yep, so we get no negative modifier. We have 19 here in planet size, and our capacity is 56 Okay, we have a little bit of everything, a couple of city districts, a couple of industrial districts, and some generators, and what else, mining, and food. And a couple of buildings, what do we have? Planetary administration, we'll upgrade that later, will give us a couple of different jobs, enforcer and politician. We have administrative offices, gives us bureaucrats, they turn consumer goods into unity. And I think here in the industrial district, we can get more of these artisans that give us more consumer goods coming from minerals, of course. We also have one set of research labs here, giving us two jobs for that. And we can see here what we are producing 11 in, in each category of research, physics, society, and oh, what is the last one? Engineering. And we can see here what the whole planet is doing right over there, what we're producing. All in the green, that's good. And finally, we have commercial zones that would give us clerks and traders. Clerks don't have, they have very high reputation, I think, but we do get amenities from them, and amenities are good. Well, we also have two slots open, so we could build more buildings if we wanted to. But right now, we're not going to do it, because we have not very much here in minerals or energy credits. We have a couple of features here, and I think if we look here, yeah, okay, we can... Get rid of all of them here so that would be interesting maybe we'll do that we actually have sprawling slums look at that if we clear this one for 300 credits which we don't have well, then we get one extra pop right now we have only one available job and it's a clerk if you look at on the population tab we can see the clerk being down here there is four of them there's a fifth slot here each clerk produces yeah we can see here trade one percent increase Trade value plus three and amenities three. But I do want to have good amenities. Right now, we have a, a pop approval rating of 57. And then that feeds into the stability here. So anything above 50 in approval will give you a bonus. Plus four in our case. And then stability overall being 63 will give us, well, more production, more resources, more trade, more immigration. Anyway, uh, that's, I think, all we need to look at here. We have a few armies as well. And that is Velutaria, right over there. Hmm, looks good. Okay, so what else do we have? Well, we have a couple of ships. This is the start you always get, right? One construction ship and one science ship. The construction ship doesn't take a leader. We'll go ahead right away. And I think normally we get... Yeah, here. We can send it over to this asteroid over here. 2940-Y71. And excavate the three minerals. Let's do that. So build mining station for 100... Yeah, we're going to use it up right away. But that's fine. We'll do that. Now, we have a few alloys here. Looking at my science ship, we only have one. Jargum Dunzubir is there, our head of research. He has a boost of anomaly discovery chance, which I do like this one. 10%. That means we might find something useful, more likely than not. Let's see. He's level 1, so it's not that good. But let's see. If we set him out, I'm going to get out of our system. That's Velutaria. Okay. I think what we're looking at here is actually two worlds. One is Tropical and one is Savannah. I don't think we can actually use Savannah. Can we use Savannah? I don't know if we can. Let's look at our species here. We can use Tropical Preferred. Continental and Ocean, also okay. Savannah, no. And remember at uh, the startup uh, for the game, we said there should be two guaranteed habitable worlds close by. There's one here. Pretty small, size 14. Anyway, let's go back into our scientist here. I'm going to send it over to this planet because we're going to want to survey that quickly so we can send a colony ship over there. Okay. 
Now he's, we have given the orders here. We also have to look at our scientists here or our research. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see what we have in the galaxy. It's a huge galaxy, yeah. It's a ton, well, specifically 1,000 systems here. If we look here, we are, because it's a ring, you're limited, you know, in where you can go, but not that limited. You can see we can get around here. So, and I did reduce the hyperlane density, so we should have few more choke points. There's one here, one there. It's not, yeah, it's still pretty open, actually. We're sending our scientist over there. Oh, that's good, I think. Yeah, we'll leave our task force there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and jump into our... Well, our empire, first of all. Chancellor Baramden Subir. He is in charge. And we actually have, now have a new screen that I haven't used before. That's the government screen. And when we start out, we have three open counselor positions here. The chancellor itself. Now we bear him here. And the Minister of Defense, which is Pudrig, and then Head of Research, Jargim. Now they give us, what do they give us here? They only, I think only bear him here, you can see the bonus here. He gives us what? Uh, he has a special skill where he gives us, he's principled, so he gives stability plus two. And that is, that's good. We'll take that. They can gain more as time goes on. He is a governor type. So I think he's probably in charge of the Lutaria. Yeah, he is in charge here. Or she. Bir oh, wait a minute. No, that's a governor there. Okay, wait a, no, wait a minute. Let's go back to government here. That's Barim. And this is... Let me go back into Militaria. Oh, we are back here. This is Barim. We have a special governor here actually over there. There are two different, two different leaders there. Okay, anyway. So Barim here is our chancellor, our, our overall governor. And for every level that Barim is and she is level one now we get unity from factions two percent and edicts fund plus five and on top of that she also has that leader trait of stability plus two we have two more slots we can unlock later we have an agenda going on infinite opportunities it will take us another what 212 no 30 months before we are ready to launch it what do we get citizen pop happiness plus four and then plus ten over time last for ten years Okay, let's go ahead and look at uh, the other leaders and see what we actually have here now. So we have two leaders. Yeah, Barim and Berm. Berm is actually the governor over the Velotaria sector. We have one sector with one planet, so that's what she's doing there. And her trait is the planet effect for, the, for this specific planet only. She will give us, what, building and district upkeep minus 10 and planetary build speed plus 10. Okay, yeah, we'll take it. We also have our head of research. He has a skill that is only used when he is uh, researching, not researching, but when he's out there surveying, and normally discovery chance 10%, we saw that before. And then we have our Minister of Defense, leader experience gain 10%. We don't have anybody else, we can recruit more, it's going to cost us unity. Let's not worry about that too much. Okay, let's jump in now to technology before we're done here. Our head of research, right now we're getting 7% boost here. Our base is 20.78, we are materialist, and head of research gives us two. What do we want for mm -hmm. physics? Okay, I was looking for the one that gives you 20% increase in research. It's not here, so what do we pick then? Maybe research speed plus five overall for everything. Yeah, we'll take that. That's 2,000 in research. We'll take us, well, 90 months. Mm -hmm. Society, what do we have? Ah, here's this one. Society research from research is 20%. I'm inclined to take it. We also have hydroponics farming, gives us more food. And then down here, eco simulation, also more food. But at this point, I don't think we need it. We'll go for the research. That will help us out as time goes on. And then for engineering, we do have the 20% engineer research here as well. I can get also afterburners for, uh, for ships and coil guns, but I'm going to go for engineering. Okay. And I think that takes care of it. I'm going to play on fast speed, but. Uh, Oh, new archaeological site. Let me just double check it. Oh, that's the one we have in our system right here. Ex gravitas. A string of strange anomaly readings is emanating from the surface of Beconda. We need to launch a surface excursion to find out more. Now, this one here requires a scientist. Difficulty one. Yeah, we don't have anything right now. That's a scientist. So when we can, let's get a scientist. 
the problem I'm having probably is going to be that we want to survey out here in space as well. We'll see what we can find. Contact report remnants. Quintian xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the recent findings of alien life. This fevered storm in the scientific community has had some negative yet temporary impact on the pursuit in other fields. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means that we get a little negative modifier here. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah, nothing really. Okay, I want to check one thing now. And that is, what do we have coming up for our leaders here? If I were to recruit, let's say, a scientist. Do we have anybody who is a... Well, this one is good. Research speed. Empire effect. I want to get this one. Uh, we also have experience game. But do we have one for archaeology? Nobody in archaeology. Okay. I'm tempted to take this one. Eventually, I would probably want to have three of them. First contact protocols. Let's look and see what we have. We shall greet the Xeno with open arms. What happens then? Our first contact protocol policy is set to proactive. And the effect is we can't attack neutral entities. Other empires will find it easier to establish communications with us. And it's going to be a race to do that, right? To establish communications. But every time we are the ones to find the alien and communicate with them first, we get 50% more influence. Okay. Also, first contact discovery speed plus 10%. Okay, so that means we're going to be quicker to get that process done. I'm going to go for the open arms. Mm -hmm. Proactive. Okay, here we are in the system. Torel. Oh, there's almost nothing in here. We can check that here. We can see we have four orders there. Hmm, yeah. I want to find out what's on here. If we have anything special going on. Complete. Okay, uh, in the meantime, we got construction complete. A mining station. Excellent. Now, I'm going to go continue here and get the mining station there. Oh, we don't have enough. We need a hundred. Okay. We'll wait a little bit. You know what? We need to take advantage of the alloys we have. Let's go to the Lutarian station and get a science ship for a hundred alloys there. Once that's done, let's then recruit another scientist. ISS Tagarion, once we get to 100, there it is. Now let's go ahead and get that mining station for 100. And that's going to pick up that energy credits we have over there. I'm leaving our task force the way it is now, but I'm going to be using it when I can bump it up. We can have 20 ships total here. And our command limit for this particular fleet is also 20. And we have, I think, a leader here. How good is Patrick? He is 18 years old. 18? Okay, and you're in charge. He's also the Minister of Defense. Alright, Empire Effect by skill level. Ship upkeep is reduced. Arm upkeep is reduced. Starbase upkeep reduced. It's good. 18 now? Yeah. Our science ship here is ready. Now, I want to get a leader. It's an empty slot. These are the ones we can get. They are all... Now, two of them are materialists, and one is egalitarian. That's kind of important. Once we get factions, they may want to have... Yeah, okay, we have one of each kind here. I'm looking at this here. One of each ethic. That's good, because then nobody's going to be upset, right? The faction's going to be upset otherwise if you don't have one on the council. Now, who do we want, then? I'm tempted to go for Spark of Genius. Joram over here. He will give us research speed 6. I mean, plus 3. 6 if we go to level 2, I think. We also can get this one. Lead experience gain. Raldum. And then finally, Galbrig. Galbrig is service speed 15, which is tempting. But I feel that we should go for research. And then instead of having him, Jorgim, here as head of research, which is okay, but he doesn't do anything for the research. You know, he's only affecting his own surveying out there. And we'll go for the, yeah, for Jorgim here. He's 32. He's quite old. But we'll take him. He's going to be on the ship, so he can still go ahead and survey, but we want him at the same time to be heading up research. And there's no negative effect to that, I think. So that's Joram here. Yeah, we can see his effect right now, being on the ship alone. Not alone, but, I mean, without being on the council, it doesn't do anything. Pick him there, and now we get the 3%. Good. And that shouldn't... Actually, let's double-check the civic. Egalitarian, materialist, materialist. Okay, we're missing a xenophile. But that's okay for now. We don't have a faction anyway. So he's here. 
head of research, do we want to go straight to this archaeological site? I think in five years we get a refresh of our leader so we can get another one. But there's nobody there now that has anything to do with excavation. So there's nothing much we can do. But I think I'll go ahead and start with him here. And we'll get... Yeah, because it's holding us back from the precursor, right? Well, well yeah, let's do that. We'll see how it goes. And I'm going to get another leader when I can. We have more alloys. We can build another ship right away. And we're making 22 unity. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go to the military station. Let's get a science ship. Yeah, we'll do that. In the meantime, it looks like we have now investigated Toral 1 here, our tropical planet. Okay, what do we have? Hmm, we do have something. I'm looking here. There's a bubbling swamp. Gas extraction wells here. Okay, that's interesting. So that will give us, once we have the required technology, I can't remember which one that is, but then we're going to be able to take advantage of it. Exotic gases. That's going to be very helpful. And we have one other feature here. This one will give us two more districts. That's it. Okay. But in the meantime, there's 14 here. Not much when it comes to mining or agriculture. Generators, decent. But we're going to take it. What I want to do, actually, now thinking about it, since we are researching, uh, not researching, we're surveying, we're going to take control of this, send out our construction ship, and then we want to have a... If I select this here, a, a colony ship. As soon as we can. We're lacking a little bit, but let's let's take that. As soon as we get this one done, we get another one. Oh, wait. 200. We're not making many consumer goods. You know what? That is the thing I would like to get. Velutaria. We could put in an industrial district here. We have one job, and right now our population is growing here. We can see that there, the Quintai. But I want the next to be basically producing more consumer goods. And we can do that here. If we go for the industrial district, we get one job for artisans that will create nine more in consumer goods. We could also, couldn't we, go for the civilian industries? All right, we could do that. Then we get two artisan jobs. We get 17 in consumer goods. But that's going to convert our minerals, which we do want that, right? Yeah, but I think I might go for this one instead. It's going to cost us, oh, 500. We don't have 500. We have to wait. Either way, the district is 500. If you do the building for the civilian industries, that's a little bit less, 400, and also faster. And yeah, I think the time is reduced as well because of the we had a leader ability there for the governor. Yeah, uh, plenty of build speed, 10%. There. This one here says 500, but it is, yeah, it is 500. Okay. This is reduced. Maybe I will go for a civilian industry, but we'll do it a little bit later because we don't have enough just yet. Okay, well, that is, I think it's going to be it for now. We'll pick it up here next time. Guys, come back then. We'll play more of Stellaris.